Then next come the Kenyan Somali. Mr. Speaker, there are 2,780,502 at 5.91%. The Somali community, if I may speak for Mr. Speaker, is a nation. It's not a tribe. Of all the tribes of Kenya, Somali is not a tribe. MP for Wajir, uh, Wajir North. Uh, Mr. Speaker, as I rise to support this motion, I am in a kind of, I am at crossroads that do we really lack laws or it's about political goodwill? It's about implementation of laws. Remember, this is in our grand norm. These principles and values are so explicit in the grand norm, the Constitution, which is the apex law in this country, that talks, advocates for inclusivity, social justice, equity, all the good things. Is it mere English? or it meant something in the formation and the, uh, and the preparation of this constitution. Mr. Speaker, those values and, and principles of governance are thread with those of public service are clear that communities must be represented proportionately. We are not talking of equal proportion or in some context what some of my colleagues talk of one man, one shilling. That is not the issue. Equity, shareholding. I'm a citizen by right. I'm not here in Kenya, courtesy of anybody. Do I really get my right as a Kenyan? Is there is this catchy word, equal opportunity employer? Do people really implement these phrases or they are just good English words? These values, are they just, doc just ornamental? When shall we? It is not actually a privilege. Whereas the fundamental rights and freedoms are to be realized in some of, the, uh, in some of them, progressively, because the country doesn't have the, the wherewithal to make sure that they are implemented fully. When it comes to the values and principles, <coughs> of good governance in our constitution, Mr. Speaker, it should be clear they have no time frame. It is mandatory. They must be implemented. There is no negotiation about this. Why am I saying this? I come from an area which is ordinarily marginalized for just being from northern Kenya. I'm not seeking for cessation. We are not seeking for any kind of uh, a separation. We are proud to be Kenyans, and we don't beg anybody. And to be on record, Mr. Speaker, the first community under sky who came to Kenya are the Kushites. This is a fact in history. But with that kind of history, we still stand marginalized. I can for sure tell you there are many prestatals and corporations that do not have some communities as employees in this country, Mr. Speaker. Quite a number, innumerable. And if you will allow me, I can take time to present a list of these prostatals, which take taxpayers, and yet they don't have one single from, uh, uh, employee from Northern Kenya. I was perturbed when I went around these prostatals. This is unacceptable at this time. Imagine Kenya has been taking loans, Mr. Speaker, from 1963, we have been struggling with one issue, the gap between the haves and the have-nots. Today, there is another cancer, discrimination. Discrimination, blunt and discrimination, when the rules are clear. This must be dealt with decisively, Mr. Speaker. They talk of inclusivity, equity, social justice. When it comes to ethnicity, they like treating northern Kenya. The Somali community, if I may speak for Mr. Speaker, is a nation. It's not a tribe 
of all the tribes of Kenya. Somali is not a tribe. They always want to treat Somalis as Somali, as a tribe. And if you look at the coordinates of tribes of Kenya, I am a Nigerian, and I'm proud of being one. Gari is, an, is a tribe. Ajuran is a tribe. Ogadeng is a tribe. Bigodia is a tribe. But they want to treat Somalis as a tribe, which is unfair. I want to tell that these things must be dealt with. They have gone to, corruption has gone to some levels, Mr. Speaker. When they are filling the employment form, somebody feels a tribe that doesn't belong to him so that they can be accommodated. They know that their tribe is overemployed. You will see wonders in, the, in terms of data. Even the integrity of employment data is seriously questionable, Mr. Speaker. That other tribes use the tribes of the marginalized tribes to make sure that they get entry. Mr. Speaker, we are at a loss. The marginalized are not getting their space. I in, really agree. In as much as we will amend, what will this amendment do if the big tribes are not ready? I don't have to blame the big tribe. They are big by nature. If the country, the government is not willing to accommodate the marginalized community. They have been getting loans since independence 1963. How much of these loans went to northeastern Kenya? I remember you were once requesting for a tarmac road, Mr. Speaker, to reach the DAB, your constituency. The billions we are dealing with, the economic quagmire we are in, is about loans that shall be bequeathed to our next of generations to come. Yet you don't have, equitably, part of these loans in your constituency, Mr. Speaker. So we have been getting loans for who? For a particular region. Even the equalization fund has become a mockery, Mr. Speaker, that everybody is looking for equalization when we are naturally unequal, Mr. Speaker. What, you, what we used to call assals, you will even wonder Nyeri is qualifying to be an assal area, Mr. Speaker. Something is amiss. We are getting it wrong. It's like the marginalized are deeply getting marginalized and something has to be done. Mr. Speaker, these reports that are presented to, to Parliament, in my view, are not authentic. They require forensic audit. Even the data is manipulated. The truth is farther than what is brought to Parliament. The bigger tribes have bigger proportions than what is on paper. So I beg, in as much as we amend, can we engage each and every prostatal and ministry to make sure that there is equity? I'm not asking for equality. When will adjurers be given equal opportunity as they ad, uh, put in their adverts? I today speak for the Ajuran community. When will they be mainstreamed in the main public service, Mr. Speaker? We can no longer I'm not under any colony. We all got independence in 1963. What is this that is a setback to me as an Ajuran and not other tribes? It is unfair, universally unacceptable. It is clear in our constitution. It is deliberate that we are being marginalized, not only in terms of uh, employment, economically. I believe it is the first time that Kenya Kwanzaa is trying to put the main road, to tarmac the main road going to Mandera. For that I support. But that is just a drop in the ocean. A drop in the ocean. People are forgetting the white highlands are becoming squeezed. They are be being fragmented and they have to move to assals. And that shall be the basket, the bread basket of Kenya in the future. By the time they will be coming, I don't know what kind of situation they will find. With those few remarks, I fully support, but we must enforce our laws. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.